So CIM is, I think, a much um, a much less accessible exam uh, in terms of um, the the way that the, the the cases come. Every candidate comes into that um, terrified that it's going to be a a um, malignant tumour that they're going to miss, and having missed a malignant tumour, that means they failed the exam. Can you fail on one misdiagnosis like that? Is that how the exam works? No, I mean you can you can you can fail a segment, so you can fail CIM if your response to you know, a, a question is so bad that the patient is um, severely um, injured or compromised and that you really don't allow yourself any lifelines to get back from that. Yep. Um, so that would that be that one section. You can't fail the whole exam on that. Okay. Um, and to be honest with you, um, you know, there are, there are two examiners with five questions, so there are ten marking points in that exam. Um, if you've got, um, you know, uh, five or six marking points, probably six maybe marking points correct uh, or, or um, assessed as passing, it's unlikely you're going to fail that segment as well. Okay. And but, what, before we even go into it, what is CIM? What does it stand for for people who haven't heard of that before? Yeah, so CIM is Clinical Investigation and Management. Okay. And so what are you testing? What are you trying to get out of the trainees? So C CIM is more about case synthesis. It's more about, uh, which is why I say it's quite difficult and, and less accessible for candidates. In, in some states, most of the cases that candidates see on a day-to-day -day working basis have already been organised and assessed for them. So they see a lot of stuff in theatre, not quite so much stuff in outpatients or mm -hmm. rooms or that sort of thing. So it, it's the process of how do you take a, a first presentation of a case to a, um, a reasonable management um, plan. And so CIM for me is a bit like a river. You, you get given information over time and that information consolidates or might allow you to think down a different pathway of, of this case that's coming through. So the things that, that are, lead themselves to CIM cases are obviously um, bone lesions, tumours, soft tissue tumours, um, uh, infections, uh, metabolic processes, but also... Um, I doubted. <laughs> I doubted, yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Um, just to finish the high data myth, uh, many, many candidates won't remember or won't have heard about the myth of the high data. About eight, nine years ago, inside CIM, there was a, uh, a soft tissue mass, that the underlying diagnosis of which was a high data of the buttock. And that case was put up purely to assess how candidates would go about um, the, the investigation and assessment of a soft tissue mass. Mm not about your comprehensive knowledge of high diabetes. <laughs> and I, I, to be honest with you, I don't think many people, I remember the case really well, I don't think many people actually got to high data. Is, is that important? But I don't think see? anyone failed the case. Yeah, so people, people might think that if you don't get the diagnosis, then you, you fail the CIM. Like you probably want to finish each section thinking, I got the answer. Is that not what it's about? It's not what it's about. You've got six minutes. And how many of us in our working day have come to the final conclusive answer in any case that we see in six minutes? Hmm. So th there's a lot of leeway with that. I mean, if it's a, if it's a fractured humerus, you probably should be able to pick that. <laughs> yeah. but so things like tumours and infections or high data, it's, perhaps it's more about the process by which you work towards a diagnosis, not hmm. necessarily arriving at one. Absolutely. And, and, it's, and that higher order thinking of where do you go next. So you, you, you're working in a peripheral hospital, you've got a child who's got a, a, an aggressive bone lesion on a plain x-ray. What do you do next? You know, this is day one in Wagga. What are you going to do next? You, you need to be able to talk to parents and, and say, this is what will happen. You know, we're not going to manage it here. We're going to be involving our colleagues mm -hmm. in, a, in a bigger centre. But you don't want to just be the, the candidate that just refers everything and that they think that's the end of it. They, you want to be saying, well, I get um, advice from the, the tumour service um, and may well um, end up referring this patient up to the tumour service, but um, this, is what, this is the principles of what they'll do. Yeah, so and, not and, then, saying... and that gives you the opportunity then to talk about adjuvant chemotherapy, to talk about mm. um, uh, reconstruction versus ablation surgery, to talk about all those things that you know all about. You're not an expert in them, but you know all about them, and that's what the exam's about.
So you're not saying, I would refer them up the road, next case please. You still have to explain what they would do up the road. Correct. Um, because we, we can't yeah. assess, I'd refer them up the road, next case please. <laughs> we just can't assess that. Yep. What about the whole um, tumour biopsy principles mantra? Is that something worth regurgitating and having a spiel for? Or is it annoying for examiners to hear the same thing for every yeah, CIM case? You, you should, certainly shouldn't say it for every, every case. Um, and one of the... One of the criticisms of CIM is that candidates go tumour hunting. So I have actually physically had a situation where I've said, yes, I understand that a tumour is a differential here, but this is an infection, what are you going to do next? And I'm, then the next response is, I'm still really worried that this is a tumour. No, no, I'm <laughs> telling you, you it's an infection. <laughs> so, so going tumour hunting can be as detrimental as ignoring things that might be aggressive and nasty. But um, the, the, the tumour biopsy principles, you know, everybody knows them. You can, you can know them by knowing the basic principles and why each section is done and why we do it in that way. Or you can remember it like you're remembering a poem. And it's pretty obvious the people who are just reciting the poem. Um, whereas what we want people to be able to do is to say, well, you know, why are we bringing the drain out in line with the wound? Why are we looking at a specific compartment? Why are we sampling from a specific part of the tumour rather than just remembering the mantra? Yeah. Okay, I think it's, I'm guessing from an examiner's point of view, it's gonna sound like the EMST mantra hmm. in terms of people just reciting the same thing over and over again. And, and look, there may be a time where the question is, tell me about um, the flow of uh, a tumour biopsy. And we're asking you to go through the mantra. But you might find in that situation, there will be one aspect of it that we're going to delve a bit deeper into. Okay. And the same with the MST principles. Yep. Okay, so that's... And, and, and uh, just going on from that, if part of the EMST, part of the tumour biopsy is, is why are you worried about something? What's the time frame here? You know, is this urgent? Is this not urgent? Mm. There's, there's, it, it's very powerful in an exam to say, look, I'm really worried about this patient. These features of this case make me feel that this is a very serious situation. And so I'm going to progress this quickly. And, okay. and you know, something like um, a case that might be a, potentially a necrotizing fasciitis, you know, and your, the scenario is you're seeing this, this person at 10 o'clock at night in A&E, &E, um, you know, you might even find that the, the examiners say, well, are, are you worried? You know, you've got your time on the list tomorrow morning. Um, uh, what are you going to be doing? And, and clearly, for a condition like that, you need to be progressing it, and time is, is not the, um, mm. you know, you're not going to be limited by when you've got theatre time. So you're going to go to theatre. There's an opportunity to express the urgency of the situation, yeah. understand the urgency of the case yeah. you present. Yeah, because when it's all said and done, again, come back to Wagga. Is that patient at 10 o'clock at night with necrotizing fasciitis in Wagga going to be treated expertly? Mm. Okay. I think it's a good summary of CIM. Uh, is there anything else you want to add for do's and don'ts? Or? Do's and don'ts and CIM, well, don't tumour hunt. Um, have, a, have a structure, so have a, a good pathophysiological uh, sieve. Do you have any examples of sieves? Oh, I, I use sieves. You meaning you meaning a way of thinking about differentials? Yeah, it, it's probably the only um, acronym that I ever use, and I use a thing called um, DIMP Mini, which is a um, I think most people would know about that, but um, developmental or degenerative infection, neoplasm, trauma, mm -hmm. and then the smaller things, the many things, metabolic, inflammatory, um, neuromuscular, and iatrogenic. Mm -hmm. So okay. if I'm if I'm looking at a case and the first thing that goes through my mind is this trauma, is this tumour, is this infection? Could, could all of those be part of the differential? And so it gives you a structure to then bring things through. But the examiners are going to say things to you like, all right, for this case, you've told me about your concern about it being a tumour, and you've told me that you, 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 it could be an old fracture. Are there any other pathologies that might be in, included? And that then should trigger, oh, hang on, I haven't talked about infection mm. yet. So they're going to give you little hints Pull like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's enough of CIM. Um, maybe we move on to the second part of the vibers, which is the clinicals. Mm. Um.